my name is Evan. I enjoy slacklining. I was always into that sort of like extreme sport. I mean, I did do GCSE PE, but I was never into something like like football. It just didn't interest me. Uh, so I did I did parkour for a little bit, and then I did bouldering, which is like rock climbing, uh, for quite a long time as well. And I was just googling what are similar sports I can get into because I I seem to really enjoy it. And slacklining came up. Uh, so I thought, oh, that, that seemed quite cool because I wanted to learn something new. So I, I bought myself a slack line. I, I watched videos about slack lining, so not only to get the technique down, but then also learn about the, um, the community to all because it's got a really good community and a lot of the people that do it are just very welcoming. I mean, I haven't met anyone yet that does it because it's quite scarce at the moment, especially in this country. Slacklining is essentially when you put a piece of webbing, uh, which will look a bit like a bit like that. So it's essentially it's essentially kind of like a flat rope sort of thing, and it's often used for climbing. And what it is is when it's tensioned in between two points, two anchors. It could be trees or it could be a metal frame. And slacklining is the art of walking across it, uh, doing tricks on it. Although that's not the the sort of thing I'm into. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an extreme sport and it's recently grown popularity quite a bit because it, it, it's often linked with different sports like bouldering or parkour because it takes similar skills and a similar sort of mindset and environment. So there's three main types of slacklining. So you've got the, uh, the trick lining, normal slacklining and high lining. And long lining kind of uh, links between uh, normal slacklining and high lining as well. So that's just essentially on a longer rope. So normal slack lining is what I prefer and it does sound the most basic and that's literally walking back and forwards but you can always make that exciting for yourself. You can try walking backwards, you can try walking over water which is what I like to do sometimes. Um, you can try walking across it while doing something else like playing an instrument or, or something. Uh, then there's, there's trick lining which uh, Slack lining kind of got put into the urban culture and then people started to have like trick lining competitions and there's some great clips on YouTube of people doing some amazing stuff on there. The only thing that can hurt you is like if you if you fail, so if you were to fall off the line or, or maybe catch yourself on the line or something once you've fallen off. Um, so it's just a case of if you feel like you're going to fall off and you're a beginner, maybe not try and fight it because that's when you're more likely to fall off and hurt yourself. I have face planted before and it's hurt quite a bit. Uh, so it might be an idea to just, if you're starting to feel a bit out of your depth or a bit out of control, to step off the line and have another go. And you can avoid these risks by um, just, just being sensible about it. So for example, maybe not do it in wet or cold weather where, where you might get a slippery or icy line. Um, be sensible with clothing. So I usually do mine barefoot or it might be an idea to have like um, flat soled shoes. Uh, you don't want anything with, with too much grip, you don't want anything with too little grip, so that's why I, I prefer barefoot. And obviously clothes, you want to have something that's loose, uh, not really restricting, something that's practical. So I'll often go out in tracksuits and a jumper or, or a vest or something and, and, and I'm set. A tip that is the main thing that might, might sound a bit unusual to start with, if you're on a slack line and, and, a slack line and you start to panic, um, then you're going to lose focus, you're going to lose concentration. So if you've got something else you're focusing on, like your breathing, that's when you're more likely to kind of calm down, chill out and get your head in, like get your mind in the moment. Uh, there are other, other tips like to help beginners, like such as form. So you're supposed to put your arms above your head. I don't do it quite like that. I kind of have mine out, out the side to a bit. But um, to, to learn, I certainly had my hands above my head for a bit. Uh, and that helped with the balance. And there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, things that you wouldn't have thought of beforehand. Like you've got to tense your core a lot of the time. That helps you keep, keep solidly on there. Uh, if you have your legs slightly bent, it helps as well. Uh, but th these are things that you, you can get recommended by like tutorial videos or, or just on Google. But a lot of these you can figure out yourself. The slacklining community um, usually are 
generally like really nice people and they, they're kind of like the extreme athletes that you you'd sort of see in most similar sports so if you were to go uh, to a rock climbing gym and talk around to those sort of people then then they'd probably have similar similar interests or, or similarly with surfing and it's, it's that sort of community of people that uh, are into different sports um, that are kind of about freedom and just exploring an adventure that really appeals to me. And I did it because my balance wasn't very good. I wanted something to learn. But then after I started learning it, I realized that there were other benefits to it as well. So when I, when I started learning, I, I found it quite addictive and I found that I was quite, uh, so to speak, at peace when I was doing it. And I didn't quite understand what it was. And I looked into it and um, it turns out it's something called moving meditation. Uh, so I, I've tried meditation previously and it just didn't quite do it for me. I have got a terrible attention span. So um, I needed something to focus on while I was doing it as well. So that's why I enjoyed slacklining because it, it kind of got me in a peaceful mindset. Uh, it allowed me to have no cares in the world, just completely kind of escape from everything and just kind of be in my own head for a while without thinking of anything uh, too, too serious. So it was, it was good, it was a good bit of escapism. And that was what kind of attracted me to do it more often. I kind of was looking forward to whenever I could get, get back from school or work and then go straight on the slack line just to kind of be at peace.